Hi guys, this is Lisa from Cookery Nation. This is our very first live stream. So, there's probably going to be lots of bugs, lots of mistakes, and we'll just see what happens. The reason that we're making the live streams is because we noticed that there's a lot of perfection cooking going on out there. And what, what I mean by that is so many sites are making everything so perfect. And you know what? Life is not perfect. So, yes, our site has lovely pictures that are, you know, with great lighting and everything like that. But sometimes mistakes happen in the kitchen. Sometimes you don't have the right ingredients. There's a lot of things that can happen in the process of cooking that can put a monkey wrench in it. So that's part of the reason why Cookery Nation was born, was to make cooking accessible to everyone. No matter what your skill level is, if you have problems multitasking or keeping you organized or time management, or if you are an advanced cook, we want to be able to allow for everyone to cook effectively and enjoyably. So. With that in mind, we decided that we would do more live streaming so that you can see the actual process behind the scenes, when good things happen, when not so good things happen, all of the, all of the above. So, you will see me cook in all my glory, mistakes and all. What I'd like to do is get feedback from people about the audio and the lights and things like that because it's kind of difficult when you are in situ doing it at the time. Be forewarned, some things might be really noisy so you might want to turn your volume down when I'm doing the mixer or whatnot. So, just to clarify our website, that's probably a good idea, we're at cookerynation.com so you can come by and visit there. We are also cookery underscore nation on Instagram. And of course, we're here on Facebook. Uh, we're hoping to do a bunch of live streaming because we also want to be able to provide some videos throughout the website and things like this. So we'll have our step-by-step -step recipes on the website along with some live feed video so that you can see how it actually all comes together. Uh, I'm going to try to multitask the best I can. We'll see how it goes. For our very first live stream, what I wanted to do was do some DIY brown sugar because it's quick, it's easy, and people are quite surprised that you can make your own uh, brown sugar at home. And it costs a lot less than what you would get at the grocery store. And let's face it, Christmas is uh, right around the corner and you want to make some lovely cookies and you don't have brown sugar. Well, I don't want to go out in this snowstorm just to get some brown sugar. So let's do it ourselves. It's very simple, molasses and white sugar and a mixer. I don't advise doing this particular recipe by hand because it takes a lot of horsepower to get the molasses and the sugar to marry each other. And doing it by hand, I don't know if that's gonna work. You can use a hand mixer or a stand mixer. I'm going to be using my stand mixer and it will take about five minutes. So let's get started. First thing we need is our two ingredients, sugar and molasses. Let me grab the sugar. Now normally, I weigh using a scale. However, for this recipe, it's, it doesn't require ac accuracy, really, at all. So you're basically doing one tablespoon of molasses per one cup of sugar. So you're looking about 28 grams of molasses per 200 grams of sugar. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to finagle with the camera so you can see what I'm doing here. Let's just see here without making too much noise. Let's bring this down and give you a 
sneak peek of what we're doing here. Okay. Let's move this around. There we go. So, I've got my messy kitchen. There we go. Now, we're going to take, I'm going to do a fairly decent batch. I'm going to go two cups of sugar two, and two tablespoons of molasses for this puppy. So let's just get you up here and you here. Let's just do it this way. Sorry about this. I will get this worked out in the wash. Okay, so here's my stand mixer. And we're going to use this guy here, the wire whisk. Okay, because that will really help to break up the sugar and the molasses. So let's get this puppy hooked up. Now, for the molasses, and let me know if this is uh, noisy, of course. Put it here. Okay. Molasses is fantastic. Now, if I'm going to be doing a decent batch, I'm going to show you a trick. I could mess up this spoon and then dig around in it, or I could use my handy dandy scale. And let's just get ourselves sorted out here. We're going to put, it, I'm going to reverse us here. And we're going to do, we're going to take our mixing bowl and we're going to put it right on the scale. We've already put the sugar in. Now I'm going to turn it on once I put the sugar in the bowl. So it, it reads zero. Now I had said that I was going to want to have 40, 40 something grams. Let's go 43 grams of molasses okay so this is all i have to do which is quite handy i'm going to watch the scale and i'm going to start pouring until i get to ah, that's good 45 that's fine now the beauty is i don't have a dish to wash and there we are. So, no need to pour it in there and scrape it out and whatnot and wash it. Okay? So now, we're going to put this guy on here. And we're going to lower him. I'm going to lock him in place. And let's go. Now, this might get noisy. I'm just gonna show it close up for a little bit and then we can get away from it so that the noise doesn't bug us. But you can turn down your volume and that way it won't deafen you. Would help if I plug it in. There we go. All right. So you'll notice, hopefully it's not too loud. So 
Okay, we're just going to turn it off for a second so we can see what's going on here. Okay, so you'll notice that everything is really big and chunky and there's a bunch in the middle that hasn't even started. Now, keep in mind, this is going to take about four minutes of blending, okay? And in between, we're going to scrape down the sides to make sure there's no ooey gooey molasses stuck on the sides, okay? So I'm going to put this down and a little bit away from the mixer and we're going to continue mixing. And once it starts, you can get it going a little bit quicker. I'm around about four. It doesn't need to be any higher than that. Okay, so let's go back over here. And so, see all that snow? Wow. <laughs> so much snow, it's crazy. Okay, so we're gonna allow that to mix. And we're gonna put away our molasses. And our sugar. It's just as simple as that. And what we're ultimately looking for is to refill this puppy. We used it all up. One of the things I do notice about doing your own brown sugar is it doesn't go rock hard within a couple of days of opening the bag. So I don't have to put um, bread slices or apple slices or whatnot in my container to keep the brown sugar moist. It just stays moist. It is amazing. And it tastes so much better. So the one thing you want to do is decide how much uh, molasses you want to be using. Add extra, it'll become richer and more flavorful. Add a little bit less, it'll be light brown sugar. So that's the key, and you'll notice that my brown sugar is not all dry and clumpy, and I made this brown sugar about, uh, oh, almost a month ago. And it's just been in this, it's not a, it's not a hardcore container or anything. It's just a minor container, but no need for the bread slices or anything like that. Now, I'm trying to figure out about looking at the camera. Now, I know my camera is over here. I keep looking over here to make sure I'm on top of anything going on over there. So, if it looks like I'm not looking at the camera, that's what's happening. So, just so we're clear. Copy. Okay, now let's have a look at where our brown sugar is. All right, so there it is. What we're gonna do, oh, I hope that's not too noisy. It's noisy on my end. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna have a look here. Ah, see? Look at that beautiful molasses. Okay, I gotta get rid of all that off the side. Because that's gotta be mixed in. Get all the way around and we get these nice big oops, there we are. Nice big clumps. Okay. There we go. Okay. And once you get it so that, you know, it's not spraying around or anything, you can put it up to about six, I'm going to guess. As long as it's not shooting out of here. Oh, hold on. Well, maybe you need to leave it at four. Okay. So there we are. It's mixing away. Good? I guess. There's a couple of things that I like to do. Now, if we find that that's too noisy, I'm gonna end up moving it to the other side of the kitchen so that I can actually talk while it's doing its thing. So, just let me know. And uh, I don't expect there's gonna be anybody in this video since it's our very first video. So, if you have, if, if you're watching this on replay and you have comments about the light, 
the sound, the noisy mixer, whatever. And just comment below the video so that I, or even my, you know, where I'm looking, if it's distracting, then let me know in the comments below and uh, I can adjust for next time. So, that was my first introduction to my handy dandy scale. The scale is a godsend in the kitchen. I use it all the time. I use so many less dishes and it's so much more accurate. I really uh, recommend getting a scale. I even have one of these handy dandy little ones that has an app. It's called the Drop Scale. And you can use it with the Drop app. I don't know if you've heard of it, but it's, it's pretty cool, actually. Okay, so this guy, things are breaking up nicely. And now I think we can increase the speed by one. Let's see. Yeah, it's not spitting out anywhere. That's good. If you find that it starts to shoot out sugar, then just bring it, bring it down and all. That's all. But you can see, even if you had a hand mixer, it might be a bit taxing on the arm. So keep that in mind. You're wondering. Yeah, I'm in Ottawa. All that snow. We're getting freezing rain too. No. Okay, so how do you store the brown sugar when it's done? Just in a jar. That's it. And if you really rarely use brown sugar, just make it a cup at a time. That's all you need to do. That mixture sounds like it's having a hard time. Okay, so we'll, ooh, gosh, that's noisy. I hope that's not too noisy. Okay, so let's look at our, okay, so you see what's happening. See how nice and light and fluffy that is? Now, we just have to break up, oops, sorry, wrong hand. We just need to break up the rest of these clumps. Now, just in case, this is so irritating that you can't even stand it. I'm going to move this puppy. Because I'm thinking it might be getting on people's nerves. So... I'm just going to take it over here. That would probably be a better idea anyways. And I have the cord. There we go. Now, hopefully that's better. So, that's doing its thing. If you're not sure about using a scale, ask me any questions you have. Uh, I'll be happy to answer them. How do I use my brown sugar? I use my brown sugar in sweets and savories. So even when I'm doing a pork roast, uh, if I want to make barbecue sauce, I'll use brown sugar. If I make, if I want chewy, chewy cookies uh, instead of crispy ones, I will use brown sugar. If I want to do some kind of caramelized situation with just a bit of sweet with a little bit of spice, if I added some other spice, brown sugar all the way. I would use brown sugar instead of white sugar any day of the week because it is so rich and much more flavorful. So, I'm going to go and have a peek. Almost. It's almost there. So we do have uh, the recipe on 
the website, all you do is search for DIY brown sugar. Very clever name, I know. Um, and we do have a video of the mixer mixing the sugar and the molasses, but I wanted to actually do it in real time so that you could also see how long it really takes. So we've been doing this for about three minutes, four minutes. Because something I do find is that some recipes will say it takes between this and this amount of time. Yeah, okay. Well, maybe that depends on the power of your mixer or, you know, a lot of different things. So one of the things we want to achieve with Cookery Nation is doing the live feed so you can see things come together in real time. And I think that that is going to be really important. And when mistakes happen, guess what? Mistakes happen. All right, I'm 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 fine with that. It's not a problem. Okay, let me go and have a peek. Okay. Probably about one more minute, I'm guessing. It's it's really fluffing up nicely, beautifully. So you'll see the transformation. And once we get it in the jar, all's good. And we use quite a bit of brown sugar, so I don't worry about uh, taking this stuff out and getting every little bit out of here. And I'm just going to refill it. And uh, sometimes what I'll do, like the thing is, your old brown sugar and your new brown sugar will just get combined with each other. And that's fine. That works. Unless you have somebody who decides that they want to always be sticking their hand in and they're not using a spoon, then you might want to wash it. But you want to make sure that you wash it and dry it really, really well. Make sure you dry it really well before you put the brown sugar in because it'll just make your brown sugar go gross. So. Okay, so now we're just going to let that finish up. And the one thing is, you're going to be sitting there going, wow, I had no idea it was that simple to do, right? And make your own brown sugar. Just get regular uh, grocery store molasses. And you can use Blackstrap, Fancy, uh, what other? We have, we have an article on the site about the different kinds of molasses. Any kind of molasses will do Blackstrap, Fancy, cooking, yeah. And... Like I say, just put as much molasses in as you want. And even if you get to the point where we're at and you say, oh, I want it a little bit darker, like the, the really dark uh, brown sugar you find in the grocery stores, great, just add a little bit more molasses and then just continue mixing it up. plans always it's a Christmas present for somebody okay okay I want to show you my brown sugar wait look at that brown sugar oh my goodness and look at how fluffy and lovely I mean, a spoon so you can see its fluffiness Don't drop brown sugar in my coffee. That would not be cool. 
Okay, so look at, look at how fluffy that is. It's not all clumped together. It's beautiful. I hope the color is okay. It is absolutely beautiful. So what we're going to do is we're just going to transfer it into the jar. Oh, of course the mailman comes. And you know what? It's Sunday. What the heck? I guess, I don't know, maybe they uh, increase their deliveries to seven days a week. I don't know. Okay. Okay. So I'm just going to put the brown sugar. Let me just see here. You can see. I'm just going to put the brown sugar into the jar. And you see, this is a really nice light color. You can opt for a darker color by just adding more molasses. That's all you have to do. See how fluffy that is? Fantastic. So, our two cups, let me just, there we go, our two cups of white sugar made by the time you fluff it all up, right? This is why when you measure brown sugar, they say whether it's packed or not, because look how fluffy brown sugar can be. That was two cups of white sugar and it fluffed up to this. So that's also the other reason why I like to use a scale because it doesn't matter how dense or packed or fluffy your brown sugar is. Uh, when you're measuring in grams, you're me measuring in grams and it just works out perfectly. So now for the morning oatmeal and the Christmas cookies and the brown sugar barbecue sauce, we are all set. And yes, this is an old um, rock sugar jar. Last year for Christmas, um, my son got rock sugar for his tea from a tea shop in Ottawa. And we, of course, ate it all. <laughs> but it came in this fantastic jar. So this is now our brown sugar jar. So now this goes back in the pantry. Ready? for the next cup of tea, cookies, barbecue sauce, whatever. Let us know how you use brown sugar. Let us know if you've ever tried to make your own brown sugar and whether you still make your own brown sugar or if you're going to now try to make your own brown sugar. The recipe is on the website, uh, cookerynation.com. Let us know what you thought about the live stream. I'm really curious to get some feedback on it and tell me where I can improve and what you liked. And if that makes her was too noisy, I'm sorry, because I can always just always have it down there. That's not a problem. Okay. All right. I'm going to sign off for now. This is our first experience, and I hope you enjoyed it. And uh, we're going to do this quite often until we get it right. So if you like it, then like the page, follow the page, and uh, we'll see you at the next live stream. Okay. Have a great day, everyone.